uh, today I am joined by Charles Burns, who is a silhouette artist and SGFA member, and he's going to talk through a bit about how he got into it, and um, how draw drawing informs his practice, and what has been happening with his silhouettes over the course of the lockdown. Okay, hello, Thank Jennifer. you very much, Charlie. It's, it's great to be here. Um, I'm, a, I'm a silhouettist, which means I cut portraits out of paper with a pair of scissors. And for, for many years, I've been working as what I would describe as an artist entertainer. And people book me for parties and events, and I go around cutting portraits of people with a pair of scissors. Uh, each one just takes a couple of minutes or two, and they come mounted on a, on a little card like this, which I will show you, a silhouette. This is a, a typical silhouette, which I can hold up to the camera. Right now. Brilliant. So that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years or so. But of course, a year ago, that all came to a crashing halt because no one was organizing any weddings or corporate dinners anymore. Um, so I, I've had to re reinvent my work, as it were. Yeah, that's, that's really exciting. I mean, it must have been quite daunting when suddenly everything was canceled and you, you had to think of how to do it digitally instead. So what was the, the process behind that? Was it automatic that you were going to go digital or did you consider other options? I think I spent a few months going a little bit insane. Um, I, I think it, it just, for a long time, I was dealing with clients who were postponing or cancelling events and, and that in itself, although I wasn't working as such, um, I spent at least two months just dealing with brides ringing up and saying, help, our wedding can't go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then postponing it and then later re-postponing it. Initially, people were postponing events for just a couple of months because they thought it would all wash over in, in, in a few weeks. Uh, and then they had to postpone them again and sometimes a third time. Um, so for, for a long time, I was just focused on that. And then when it became clear that this wasn't just something that was going to last for a few weeks um, and that I had to, to, to reinvent my work, I, I started thinking about how to cut silhouettes on Zoom. So I, I did some experiments with some friends um, like most people, this time last year, I'd not even heard of Zoom. Uh, it, 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 it appeared out of nowhere and, and struck me as a really good medium, um, especially because of the ability I have when I'm uh, talking to a large group of people to, uh, to pin the video so that I can see one person even if someone else is talking. Um, so so Zoom, Zoom has a lot of possibilities. Um, and also, some of my clients began asking me if I could cut silhouettes on Zoom because everyone was doing Zoom parties and Zoom events. So actually, it, it, once I got the idea, it, it was quite a natural progression. That's really, really good. I mean, is it, from a process point of view, is it quite different to have that filter in between you and the person um, rather than cutting them straight as you're looking at them? Well, not really. I have a pair of scissors over here. Would you like me to get one and cut a silhouette of you? <laughs> you can do, yeah. Hang on, let me put, put us in the gallery view and then... Uh... They're only over here. So all I need is you in profile. So Charlie, okay. I, I need looking, looking sideways. And this is what people find so weird. It's essentially, I need you looking in that direction. Um, so, and, and for you to conduct a um, conversation in that angle is very it's, weird. It but is. Because but you're no longer doing. Um, and what I found the most challenging thing about Zoom is that people get into this sort of mode where they they sort of almost feel like they're tied to the screen. And if I tell people to look away from the screen and look sideways, it's actually quite a weird experience because you suddenly find yourself outside the Zoom room, as it were, and back in your own space. Um, and it, and I, I think that's quite a valuable experience because it, it's quite you know, yeah, it's quite strange sort of hearing you on the side and feeling like I should look at the screen, but that I can't. It's, it's a very peculiar feeling as a sitter, definitely. But uh, I think it's quite a valuable experience. Anyway, cutting a silhouette, I, I should probably talk a little bit about that because essentially it's like drawing with a pair of scissors, but it's quite a, a rapid process as um, you can't see because you're not watching me, but you'll be able to see when you play this video back. Um, so essentially I cut a one line portrait around your profile and then go around the outside working little details of hair and things like that. 
And I'm going to, of course, you can't see it because I'm in my studio. I'm not in my Zoom studio. So what I might do at this point, Charlie, you can relax, by the way. You're finished. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. I, I, was so I, I, I I'm, going to, I'm going to flip the camera around on my iPad so that you're, you'll you appear my Zoom studio. And so I'll come around this side. Here we are. And now I can't see you. But if I hold this up, I think you can see your silhouette. I can't so. believe how quickly you do that. That's amazing. <laughs> And then what I would do at this point is I will put that on a card and hold that up. And um, I will pop that in the post to you as I do to all my clients. Hey, fabulous. Gosh, well, I'm, ve I'm very excited about that. That was unexpected, but um, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> well, it gives you an idea of what I do. Um, and, and so what I did is, I, I created a new website and I, I'm, not, I'm not naturally a techie person. So, so, so diving into WordPress and actually creating a website from scratch was quite a, an adventure for me. But as my wife pointed out, I have lots of time and no money. So <laughs> it's better to do it myself than to try, to try someone else to do it. So um, I created a website and, and what I've been doing is creating a series of virtual studio days uh, at which I sell sittings for people to come and have their silhouettes. And essentially people go onto the, the website, they choose a date, and, and, and I'm running about three or four of these events each month. And then they scroll down a long list of sittings and they choose a 10 minute slot, which they can book. Uh, and, and then, you know, they get a series of reminder emails and, and they uh, appear on Zoom, hopefully at the right time. And I cut uh, two silhouettes for them. So, so usually it's a couple or two children or something like that. Uh, and if people, if there are more people, then they just book extra, extra slots. Nice. Uh, and so that, that's what I call my virtual studio day. And I launched those uh, yeah. in the summer of last year, towards the end of the summer. Um, and I've been doing them ever since. And they're, it's a bit funny. Sometimes they're quite heavily booked and sometimes I only have one or two clients, but that's fine. And, I, and I'm enjoying it. And, and the thing I'm enjoying about it most is that uh, I found myself going, all over the world, virtually speaking, that I've had clients from New York and clients from Australia, and I even did a family in the north of India. Uh, and at one point, I found myself working at a virtual wedding fair in Guatemala, which was really bizarre. So, so the, the, the international possibilities of Zoom see, seem huge. And, and it's a, so it's, it's, a, it's a way of working, which having discovered it, I'm very keen to continue have more time in the studio so I've been able to um, focus on trying out more experiment, experimental ways of working so so and, and initially this, this came about just because I, I suddenly got very focused on Instagram as a way of getting people into my virtual studio so I and, and of course you can't just keep posting so I mean lovely though this silhouette is I can't just keep posting endless versions of that on Instagram so um, uh, I started experimenting and going back to my roots with drawing and doing some drawing and then trying to convert those drawings into paper cuttings. Um, and, that, and, that's the, and, and that's the kind of work that I'm looking to be exhibiting over the next year or so. Um, so I, I became very focused. So, so I brought a sketchbook here to, to show you. Um, so I, I, st I started by sort of drawing I don't know if you can see that. I did some drawings like that. Oh, yes. And, and, and then I turned them into paper cuttings. So, so on the other side is, is this, this, this version, is this drawing, but cut out of paper. And did you cut it with scissors again, or did you have to cut it with a scalpel? With scissors. Um, I do everything with scissors. That's amazing. I, I, I have tried using scalpels, and, uh, and my level of skill with a scalpel is nowhere near <laughs> my level of skill with a pair of scissors. So I, I understand why you've asked the question, because making all those holes in the paper yeah. is quite good. But it is possible, you see. I have this pair of magic scissors, which, I, which I'm very keen on, the only pair of scissors I ever use. And it is actually possible to use the points of the scissors to cut out a hole in a piece of paper like that. Wow. And so what, what they're, they just have so a specific kind of scissor to silhouette art or...? These are surgical scissors. They're, they're not. They're not at all specific to um, to silhouette art, but they're very personal to me. Um, and they just, you know, after twenty years of cutting silhouettes, they feel like part of my. Uh, and th and that's why I prefer to work with scissors, even though that seems counterintuitive when you actually look at the work. So I suppose all of the work does. 
does cutting it with scissors mean that that line that runs through the edge of that silhouette is that connected all the way across? It's a, it's a, it's a funny thing because you're working in what I would call negative space. Hmm. So I'll, let, let, me show, let me show you one that hasn't been mounted. Um, so this is quite interesting. So if I, if I hold this up, of course, you can't see it until I put something right behind it. But you can see this is a, 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 a drawing of a girl in a mask. Yeah. And I've become very on, on the mask as an interesting motif um, for, 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 for my work. And, and you can see that it, it, it's a quite a delicate piece of work. And it looks, like, it looks like the lines are running through. If you look at the lines of her hair, it looks like the lines run through. But actually, when you're cutting, you're cutting the space in between. So I'm cutting this shape here or this shape here, or the shape in between her eyes. So it's the white spaces that I cut out with the scissors. So you, ha you have to, and this would be the same if I was working with a scalpel or with a pair of scissors. So essentially I have to try, when I'm cutting the white spaces in her hair, for instance, I have to be very careful to always look where this line comes out over here and, and, and think about that. So for, for that reason, these are quite time consuming pieces, but at the same time, it's great. I'm enjoying it, and, and you know, in, in some ways, I feel like um, my work, my studio work has taken a new direction, which I'm now very keen and excited to explore. Well, they're and, beautiful. That's it's really exciting to see what you're doing with the same same materials, but creating such a different effect with it. I think it, for me, I've always, as I've always said about silhouettes, silhouettes are a way of drawing, and, that, and that's why I became interested in the Society of Graphic Fine Art, um, because I've always been, you know, I, I've always drawn as a way of supporting my career as a silhouette artist. But it, it, it feels like drawing was was sort of hobby or the the sideline, um, which I had to do because cutting endlessly cutting silhouettes can become a bit repetitive, and and, and it's really important to have the time in the studio just to draw for its own sake. Um, but it, my career as a silhouette artist takes up a lot of time. And so I haven't really had the time to focus on mounting work and creating a set of drawings which can be exhibited. Um, and I think this lockdown has, has given me that time. I mean, the, the gift of time is, is a precious one. Yeah, um, really, very important. really positive thing to have come out of it. Mm. And so what is coming up next for you with all these amazing drawings and the silhouettes and the zoom? So I, I'm trying to figure out a way to frame them. Um, and I don't have a frame example here to show you, but I've got another one here, which I'll, which I'll pull out so you can have a look at it. Um, the, the thing about these is when you stick them onto a piece of white card, it feels like they've become a two dimensional object. Mm. But what I like about paper cuttings is, is they're very, Three-dimensionality, uh, the, the 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 sense of the of the paper yeah, cutting the sense of going around them the object. So so I'm sort of experimenting with ways of maybe mounting them on glass or with a piece of glass behind, so you can see through them, or so they cast a shadow onto the wall behind. And you can't really see this one casting a shadow because the light isn't strong enough, but you get a sense yeah. of what happened. Um, and if you look on my Instagram feed, I, I've been doing a set of uh, of reels using these where I've shone a very strong light onto them and then just dropped them onto a piece of paper. So there's a moment uh, before they land on the paper where you see a very well-defined shadow of the paper cutting. And there are historical precedents for this because if you um, there are there are old so in my collection there's some very old silhouettes which were made in the 18th century and they were actually painted onto glass and then mounted with a uh, like half an inch gap behind the glass and a, and a piece of white plaster behind so that they when you look at them with in a strong light the silhouette casts a shadow onto the plaster so I, I'm, I'm that's essentially what I want to do with these with these paper cuttings I'm going to take the lesson from history and try and try to glass mount them in a way that they, they they cast a shadow onto the wall behind so essentially it'll be an empty frame just just with glass in the middle um, and I'm, I'm going to be uh, I've got an open studio weekend um, 
planned here in the studio for when I, I tidy all this up and put black drapes around and turn it into a, a gallery. And, uh, and it will look completely different, but uh, it's quite a nice space to have as a gallery. And I'm going to have uh, a set of 12 of these paper cuttings mounted on glass and, and arranged around the room. And I'll, I'll, uh, and I'll do an open studio for the weekend, which hopefully looks like we'll be allowed to do that this year. So I'm looking forward to that. And, and also I'm submitting um, some of these works to various competitions uh, and exhibitions um, around the country. Based in Reading, um, but because I'm so much of a Zoom aficionado, I'm going to be doing a, a physical private view one day, and the next day I'm going to do a virtual private view on Zoom. So, so uh, please, you know, please direct people to my website and sign up to the mailing list, and I will send them information about both events. So if, if, if you happen to be based in Edinburgh or New York, but you're interested in, in coming to see the private view, then you can, you can join in the virtual private view. That sounds fantastic. I think I'll have to have to pop that in my diary myself. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <lovely. Yeah. laughs> I cut this uh, this paper cutting, uh, and this is um, and I, I because I'm experimenting with various ways of doing it. It's, not, it's another one from the mask series. Yeah. But this one, um, to make it easier for me, uh, I cut it out of white paper and then painted it black. Or actually, I painted it with Payne's grey. Ah, um, that's why it's a sort of charcoal colour rather than the really that's, black. That's Darker colour, so I'm experimenting with that. And an interesting spin off with that is, of course, I just put this down on a piece of scrap paper to paint it. And I, and I, when I peeled it off, I ended up with this. Uh, I can and, see it. That's beautiful. And this yeah. only happened yesterday, but as soon as, as, soon as oh, I saw okay. that, that is, that's just it. So it, it's one of the things I'm enjoying about this process is, is once you embark on a creative process, Interesting things happen. You get interesting accidents, which perhaps you don't expect, but actually following where those accidents leads can sometimes lead to new creative avenues. Uh, and, and this process has always fascinated me and, and still does. So that's yeah. where I am with it. That's pretty nice. I think you could, you could frame that up as a painting in its own right. With... That, that's kind of what I thought, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's brilliant. So thank you very much, Charles, for sharing um, a bit of your practice with us and explaining how the lockdown's impacted on things and what you've been up to. Um, I'm very excited to see how they look framed on the glass and to see your Zoom private view of the studios. Thank you very much, Charlie. It's been lovely to talk to you. And, um, and I will send you your silhouette shortly. Let me know where to put it.